different considerations, and you can deviate from the proposal. You just need to be very clear in the motion you make what you want the tiers to be and how you want that to be enacted as law. So when they were saying 8,000, did they yeah, also go, talk go about the price? Zero to 8,000, but there was no further discussion with Ryan as to the other tiers uh, and the rates. And maybe Galen has some input on that. So board member. Hi, uh, my name is Galen Stewart. I'm a property owner in Soldier Summit and also a, uh, a member of the a uh, HOA board. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the board and everyone talking about conservancy of water. I think that's the main focus that we all have up there is making sure that that we're all doing our part in Utah, second driest state, and just conserving our water for uh, our own culinary needs up there and not landscaping items. And so I think what I, when we talked to Ryan and a few members of the board and residents that are up there, I'm not speaking for everybody, but speaking for the few and what I've done through and gone through the tier system and tried to calculate it myself. And I went back and we used, or say I used what the average person may be using, what would be fair through the, through what I live in Lehigh I calculated all my gallons. I've never done that before till now, just so I could see what I was using and what be might be an average uh, water use. The the average use that I see that they're using is extremely high because I think that is their landscaping is used for culinary and things like this, and where these are secondary homes, and some people live up there full time and 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 use more water than normally would, but they don't have the landscaping so. Why we proposed the uh, six to eight thousand gallon tier system was just try and get back to what we thought we were using on average, living full time at our residence, like myself in Lehigh and, and elsewhere along the, the Wasatch Front. So, plus giving a little bit of extra. So, we started that tier system out at like eight thousand eight eight thousand gallons, or six. I started it out at six, and then we talked about moving it to eight. But Mike, like you said, he didn't discuss the tier system beyond that through maybe one through five, through those five tiers. So I broke it down starting as just an example, is a sick tier one at 6,000 gallons, tier two at 10,000, tier three at 20, tier four at 35, and then at tier five or tier five at 50,000 gallons. And then I cut that off uh, in my own opinion like we talked last time, I thought that if anybody's using over 50,000 gallons a month, there's we got a problem and there's likely more going on than really needs to be done. So I did a cutoff at that, thinking that if anybody had to use more than 50,000 gallons, if they got a watering problem and then it become very expensive, like you showed in your tier, tier spreadsheet up there. So that's kind of where a few of us are coming from, that we'd like to be able to bump that first tier up and uh, talked to Lori Sudwicks again tonight and, and Ryan and when we talked about the 8,000 gallon and we could go to eight to 16, maybe to 24, you know, 35 and then at 50. And then I would hope that uh, if we were using over that or close to it by a month process, then, then the deterrent to be conservative is not really happening. Somebody's just got a lot more money to spend on water than they should be spending. So. There's got to be accountability in in conserving that water, and if you don't want to conserve, you're going to pay for it, or you're not going to have it at all, in my in my opinion. So, uh, I don't know if anybody else has any other. Galen, can I ask you a question? Yes. So I'm clear. Are you saying go with four tiers instead I, of five tiers? I sh I I did a I did what, pull back up. Can you go back to your. Uh, that tier system, was there five or there was there four? There were five. five. Okay, yeah, so I'm saying five, and I and I went to that where that number five is, and I put it at 50,000 gallons, and whether this is right or wrong, it's just my opinion, that I don't think you can you need to go above 50,000, especially 100,000 gallons. I mean, we have a 900, Brady, help me, we got 900,000 gallons available roughly. to us, we're roughly. Three tanks, we're, we're close to a million. Yeah, yeah. and... And I don't know what the what the volume of the water going into those tanks can be kept up if somebody has the money and starts using fifty thousand gallons a month. We don't have any water. Yeah, the pumps pumps have got to keep 
buffed, and that's our that's our issue. Well, we had a, fifty thousand gallons. If you round it out thirty days, you're just under uh, sixteen hundred and seventy gallons a day. So that's a little bit of watering. That that is, and if we have, if the more cabins we get up there, it's going to become a bigger, bigger problem. Uh, in in our opinion, that we won't be able to sustain our water, especially if we have something going wrong with springs in a certain time. And especially with fire suppression, that's another big thing. We got to make sure that those tanks are full. And if we got a problem, we got to be able to take care of it with that culinary water. Uh, one of the big things that we do see is just uh, as the homeowners are going up there, they're you know we don't want we don't want lawns, we don't want la landscaping that is not native to the area. And so I know most myself have planted a few trees and we water a little bit here and there to get those trees, but they're natural vegetation up there. So, um, yeah, that's uh, kind of kind of our thought process. So the five tier you're thinking of zero to 6,000 gallons and then six to 8,000 is what you're suggesting? Well, I think if, from what I heard from Ryan and, and <clears throat> Sudwicks, I think we've got to go from zero to eight. And then maybe we can go to to 16 and double that and and we can divide that up a little bit just so we have so we get to that 50,000 gallons and if that's not you know liked by everybody I just I just think there's got to be a cutoff point because you're surely not going to use a hundred thousand gallons down in the valley I mean that's down here unless you're irrigating two acres of culinary water all the time it's just unconceivable to build it well, you, you bring up some good points because otherwise it'd be roughly 3300 gallons a day that someone's exactly. using if we have a hundred thousand that's exactly right yeah so we need to consider those these one thing to keep in mind that we would just caution the board to consider um Certainly in our billing procedures and policies, we reserve the right to cut people off if they're late on their payments for a sufficient amount of time and other circumstances. And there's, there's a powerful disincentive if you've got the risk of being cut off. As a practical reality, governmental entities almost never actually cut somebody off from water. They're worried about liability if someone has an emergency and the water's completely shut off. Uh, they don't want somebody to die of dehydration or heat exhaustion or who knows what. Uh, and so governmental entities rarely actually cut someone off. We do have the right to cut people off, um, but there are transactional costs. It takes staff time to get up there and actually shut off valves and cut people, physically, literally cut them off from water. And there are sometimes exigent circumstances that might justify letting people still get some water. And so the disincentive that is in the staff proposal is a escalating cost. We recognize that to some people, they may just have no pain point associated with money and they can spend five hundred thousand dollars on water in a month and not care conceivably um, i suspect most people care <laughs> if they get too large a water bill but uh, that's something to keep in mind if you if you want to impose a, a mandatory shut off uh, what we have historically done is reserve the right to cut people off and say you know and, and that would be what what from the legal side we would recommend is that you retain the right to cut someone off at a certain point if that's the direction you're inclined to go rather than than saying that we are going to always cut people off because uh, there may be times when that just doesn't seem prudent in the moment to, to shut somebody's water off on the tier you said you you worked with a quick auditor's office on that uh, pricing schedule is what was that based on yeah, this proposal came from the clerk auditor's office, and so the specific numbers they've run analysis and thought about, I'll let Deneen speak to that. Um, it was mostly just looking at where the natural cutoffs were with the monthly billings already. So, for example, 77% of the monthly billings are for one to 3,000 gallons. So um, keeping the rate the same for those 3,000 gallons wouldn't make a change for 77% of the billings. Um, looking at the numbers, though, there's only um, from four to eight thousand dollars. That's only another thirteen monthly billings. So that wouldn't make a substantial change in a revenue estimate. You so say I, tier two. Um, well, the pro, the um, what he's what proposed. the request was mm. to go up to eight thousand. So. Are you saying, Deneen, that in the three to ten thousand, there's only four that are in that range? 
Okay, so um, in the four to eight thousand, there's only we've only had nine monthly billings this year that have been for four to nine, four to nine thousand. Sorry, four to eight thousand gallons. Okay. And then there's only been two, one at one at nine thousand and one at ten thousand gallons. So between, I mean, if you were to go zero to ten. That's not going to change much. Not right, exactly. Do we know a cabin owner what average they would be using? I, I ask that question because once cabins get more and more developed up there, that would be important to know and understand, I think. Um. I'd have to know a specific lot number to be able to determine, you know, what you'd consider an average cabin. I don't live up there. So if you had a lot number, I would be happy to look at it. Um, Al, Al Kara, you're in the audience. You and your good wife. <laughs> Do you? Lot 47. Lot 47. Do you mind us looking that up on yours? And there, and not just for the record, you're still living up there full time. Okay. I have a question on the uh, numbers that she just told, that she just sent out. That there are four that are over ten thousand for the year. Well, no, let. Or up to ten thousand, three to eight thousand, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Are you aware that they didn't read the meters for four months? Um, this would have been with the meter reading, I think, as of June. Didn't we do a reading in June, first, right before the meeting? Yeah, yeah I've had a uh, Brady Christensen with Utah County Public Works. I've had a couple phone calls today. Um, people concerned with that. We cannot read pretty much December, January, February, March, April, and May. We're going six months. So there's a six-month time span, and even at that six-month time span, I think I calculated there were only two or three people that had hit that max. And what we do at that, where we're only doing that for six months, we divide it. So if somebody has 8,000 gallons for the whole winter, they're not gonna, they wouldn't have to pay the higher rate because we would divide that by the month. So I, I think that would be the fair way to do it, to make sure everybody's, you know, we don't come out and say, oh, this is a good way for the district to make some money. They use 10,000 gallons, so we up the rate. Now it would be divided by what they used during the month. So those six months, Brady, that they're billed an average for the last year? They're just billed for those six months. So we, I think we read December 4th last year, or November, I can't even remember. And then we read again June, mid-June. And so whatever they use, they just paid that bill for those six months. But with this new fee, we would have to divide that by that. Say somebody used 12,000 gallons, we would divide it by the six months, so it would be an average of 2,000 gallons a month. Right, so the, so the that methodology makes it so that there's an assumption that your use is consistent and averaged across the time period between readings. Right, yeah. Just so that with all this new information, I wonder if 100,000 is maybe a bit higher than it should be. Should it be 50, should it be 30? That's a good question, and I, I think it's needs to be considered. So we could look at existing lots, as you said, and maybe we can find it, come up with a standard from that. Can I bring up just one more point? I've done some research, and I'm not a water guru. I'm not an attorney that deals with water. But we have 38.5 acre feet of water that the, the district owns on that well, which an acre foot of water is roughly 326,000 gallons. So you divide that by your about 12 million gallons of water. On the average, last year we were 3.5 million for what few people we've got up there. Now, with that said, we we there's some water going to Soldier Summit in that old system that is going into the ground. We have no doubt. But if you figure, I, I was reading through the the state statute on building lots and on what is expected on a recreational lot that is used part time 
for camping or for cabins, part-time people, they give you a quarter acre foot of water. So that's 80,000 gallons for the whole year is what the allotment is. So I don't know if you get to a point where you say, if you've used your 100,000 gallons, you're over the allotment, I, I don't know. But that, that kind of gives you an idea. If we're using three million gallons now, you get 150 homes on the hill. And, and last time be. when we met, we were talking about you know, people using their, uh, their acreage for camping. Um, and is that a, sta a statue that's allowable? And some are using uh, water to uh, uh, water the uh, plant life around, uh, improve plant um, gardening around their properties as well, which was not approved. So we have those issues. And I think that comes back to the, the CCNRs of the, of the board and what, what they've decided. Plus, when this was figured, as we discussed last time, there was no outside watering included in these figures to how much water. And we still need to drill the second well once we hit 100 paid hookups, whether it's cabins. What do we got, 12 cabins up there now maybe, build out? So... Probably going to have 20 cabins by the end of the year. So uh, yeah. I'll bet we hit our 100 connection by the end of the year, too, the way it's going. So thank you, Brady. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for that input. So the average number was 4,000 gallons. That number is a little bit misleading because of what Brady was talking about. So the first billing of the year includes the prior six months. So if I split up, that first reading into six months, the average is only about two, two and a half, 2,500 gallons. A month, month. Mm -hmm. is an average reading. Right. The whole purpose of this is not to punish anyone. It's to uh, encourage conservation on a mountain that is pumping water up a sizable mountain to tanks and to use it wisely. And that's the only reason we're doing this is for that purpose. And I think, uh, Tom, did we did we want to entertain um, comments? I, yeah, I think we should go ahead and move to public comments so far because we need to look at this tier strata. If that's not on par where we need to be, we'll have to discuss that. But um, Alice, do we have anyone that's online that would like to make a comment? Robert, Robert Bear, can you hear us? Can you speak? Robert, go ahead and unmute your computer so you can speak. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Um, sorry, I can't be there in person. I hope this is clear. Um, no, thank you again, everybody, for coming for a second time. Sorry you all have to be here after hours. Um, you know what, I apologize. I precipitated this for me. Um, so I, I, I want to start apologizing for that. Thank you everybody for being here tonight. Um, just a few points that you could jot down of the questions you've had. Um, I recognize I'm an outlier. Um, I have 11 in my family. And as we've been up there, um, I put a, a meter on and after, after the county's meter. I have an electronic that read meters it, so I could actually see what I use um, inside of the structure versus outside watering. Um, I've been using on average 20,000 a month in watering. i am sorry, not in watering, but in my inside usage only. So I've got a separate meter on each of my structures and we're using 20,000. I know it may seem like a lot, but I think when you look at anything on a bell curve, you know, two times the standard deviation is one within a bell curve um and and again like, yeah i don't expect that to be the average but that is what i use right now and so this change from five dollars um, up to as proposed which would be a significant change on you know cost for me and and again that's the ability to completely measure separately the outside watering that i have that that i'm trying to find a, a better solution for um just a, a just a few quick points just while i have Two minutes i just want to share um many people 
don't understand it is I've called the county and I've done a lot of research in the last year on water. Um, I received an email from Adam Beck that said stop using all the water. And so I, I stopped last last fall when I got an email from him, the county attorney's office. And I've been trying to look for solutions since then. Um, there's a lot of stuff we don't know. And I'm afraid as, as a proposal has been made for rates, um, from what I've heard is they, they basically looked at other subdivisions and just copied what they had. Um, well, that's a good standard. I don't feel like that's going to get you to what your costs are. Um, in fact, is, is the, the history I've been able to find out, the system wasn't profitable when we used to be 250 or roughly a gallon for a thousand gallons in the past. The change in the past that got up to five gallons has made um, the special service district profitable and hopefully put us in a better financial situation. Um, I'm really concerned whenever we're making estimates here because as the future progresses and we try to put water across to the, the city or the, the town of Soldier Summit, you know, those are full-time residents that are allowed to be there. And I, I just feel bad that, you know, we're making estimates on properties that are used only occasionally as campgrounds and other people are going to be facing these rates. Um, I feel like the biggest problem, me of which is included, has been solved by a, a problem that was in the CCNRs that's been patched. And I think the HOA has done a great job of that. Um, people don't really realize how many acre feet are in our well right now. There's, there's actually just under 100 acre feet that are allowed by the state to be pumped out of that well. Um, if, if you divide that out by, you know, the acreage that we that are up there in service by that right now, it actually comes out to 63,000 um, per month for a uh, for a 13 acre property now i know we don't propose that everybody uses that but that is what is actually allowed by what's in that well right now if you divide out all 100 i know i know the special service district doesn't own more than 30 of those but if, if you just you know just for an average of what's approved on what service there that would be sixty three thousand a month you know, and again, watering only happens three months of the year. Again, I don't think we should change this and allow watering. Um, I, I'm a, I approve. I, I completely agree with the watering system that's tiered. But just a, a quick example, I, I did talk, and, and you, we can find out more here, but we do charge. I think the special service district knows how much it costs to pump up to the top well 100,000 gallons. I think that would be an important number because if this is truly not – trying to penalize people and you'll hear different things on the board i hear them saying that this isn't to penalize people i kind of feel like everyone else that speaks it is kind of pen to penalize people and and i i feel bad because we're going to find a different solution to get me not causing a problem but you are penalizing future land developers and i feel bad for them i'm um, just real quickly in las vegas right now <clears throat> i could today buy a hundred thousand gallons for 435 dollars a month their tier system goes from 134 to then to two dollars and thirty nine cents, and their maximum rate is three dollars and fifty five cents for a hundred thousand gallons today in Las Vegas. Now I know we're a dry state. I'm grateful for the water. I know we need to conserve, but I feel like, to be intellectually honest, we're a little bit hypocritical when we want to. If, if this is truly the cost, then let's no one here or when this rate, tell me if I under, if, if it's differently. But I don't think the cost of the system ever was considered in the rate schedule proposed today. The rate schedule today came from comparing just to other mountain systems. But if you really want to do costs, I think I think the cost to pump up to that top well can be figured, and it's, it's not near that. And certainly water shouldn't cost more here where the water originates than in Las Vegas. Now, again, I'm not proposing. I, I think the problem has been solved already by the CCNRs, and I fully support that staying how it is. Um, but I just, I plead with you not to hurt other landowners and try not to hurt the standard deviation curve of people like me that might be two times where my residential purely no outside watering is 20,000 a month. That's, that's all I have, unless you have questions. Anyone else would like to make a comment that's online, Alice? As a board member, I'm not a professional on the acre feet of water and that would have to be answered by a professional. Yeah, I, I was, thought we'd ask for a couple more, but then go back to those that are here present, see if they can help answer some questions. I saw some um, contrary thoughts there. Do you want me to go ahead? Yeah. Okay, it looks like we have two more. 
Uh, Brooke, and I apologize if I say your name incorrectly, Brooke DeSosa, if you'd like to unmute and proceed. Hi, yes, my name is Brooke DeSosa. Uh, we are lot owners at One Soldier Summit. We bought just a year ago in, July, in June, end of June. Um, we did connect water. There was no water connected before. We do not have a cabin. We hope to have a cabin. Um, so we are not utilizing that water now. Um, we do pay the base rate for no water usage. Um, I am concerned with, I, I'm not opposed to a tier system. I understand. I follow the water con conversations all over the state. I'm involved in the local politics here um, with the city that I live in, which is Sandy. We're part of Metro Water. They've talked about water rate increases. We've done our part here residentially to reduce our water usage with our outside landscaping even. Um, we ripped out all of the lawn in our backyard and we're working on some different activity zones using the local scapes methodology and native landscaping. So I'm all for water con conservation and understand the need to try to um, incentivize more water conservation in this specific um, area. I'm concerned with the number of gallons per tier and the rate increase from each tier, um, especially since the first tier does feel very low. Um, I don't know that I agree with the methodology of using, you know, that was used to obtain the average for that based off of what I've heard. Um, I, I also think that it does feel really punitive. The, uh, the increase is almost 100% per tier. Um, I'd like to not be penalized for my future cabin based off of water that I'm not using. Um, when, I, when I compare that to my Sandy water bill from Metro, Again, you know, the tiers are, are much different and the, the amount per thousand gallons is much smaller and the increase per tier is less than what you're proposing here. And it sounds like there hasn't really been a rate increase um, from, what I, from what I understand. Maybe there has, it was a while ago, but for this first time rate increase in tier system, this does feel incredibly excessive. So again, not opposed to a tier system and not opposed to an increase. This just feels punitive and excessive. Um, it would be great to have a little bit more in that first tier as well. So thank you. Brooke, can I ask you a question? This is Mike Taylor on the board. Yes. Do you have any proposals for us? Well, not off the top of my head. I mean, I, I came to this party a little bit late with the information and so no. Okay. I'm, I'm just looking at what I use at my house and that's on a regular full-time basis i don't plan on having a cabin and living there full-time but we do plan to use it part-time thank you for your comments we appreciate it I, I... Go ahead. okay we have uh one more on zoom scott kimball if you want to go ahead and unmute you can proceed Hi, this is Scott Kimball. I've got, I'm up on lot C33, so we've been up there since about 2013. Uh, we completed a cabin a few years after that. Um, you know, so we're not up there full time, but from our usage, we've we've never exceeded, I don't know, probably two or 3,000 gallons uh, a month, even in heavy, heavy usage. So, you know, that, just another data point to throw out there. Um, I just wanted to express uh, support for a tiered system. Um, me personally, I'm actually fine with the rates as, as you proposed, but I do support uh, the board with the, the adjusted tiers that they have proposed. I think those provide a little more cushion than are reasonable, but um, I guess I just want to, you know, reiterate my, my support for uh, the stated purpose at the beginning, which was simply to encourage conservation uh, and clearly in order to conserve you know, to encourage that conservation, there needs to be some sort of pain point or, you know, a, a disincentive to overuse. And, and so while some of the higher rates or higher tiers do feel punitive, that's kind of the whole point, right? I mean, punitive is not the word, but it is, should be something that causes, uh, causes us to pay attention. But, you know, I support that even down here. I live in Highland. Uh, I've got four, four boys uh, living in my house. We've got six people in the household. Uh, even here, we're not using, you know, a ton. So it seems like, um, you know, again, probably not getting over six, six or 7,000 gallons a month. So, you know, there, it is a bell curve as, as Mr. Baird talked about, certainly we have to be cognizant of that. But I think from the overall goal of 
uh, let's encourage conservation, uh, fully support that and, and appreciate the board looking at that and, and saying, let's, let's, you know, manage our water. And even if we have more that's available, we don't know how long that will be. And so if we, if we encourage that, uh, behavior now and we all get in the habit of doing that, then hopefully that system is supplies us for water for many years to come. Thanks. Is Robert Barrett still on? Robert, are yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Could I ask you a question? Yeah, I think. Do you please? Do you know the gallons of inside uses use versus outside use at your property? I do. I do. That's the twenty thousand is my inside use, and then I've used up to um, about eighty thousand total. So I've used sixty thousand outside. Is that annually or monthly? You know, I, I've only I've only used twenty thousand during the the winter months through now, and and we've been up there um, pretty heavily. We like this new property, and so we've used it pretty heavily. Um, but the twenty thousand is just inside, and that's been pretty constant. Um, only in the we actually haven't watered much at all this month because we've been blessed to have so much rain. And in fact, information some of you may not know the water. I just checked. And the, the watering station that's monitored close by us, this water year, our mountain has already received more water than we did last year. Um, it's recorded by the, um, oh, there's, there's two sites up there. Sorry, I can't remember it. But anyway, so just in the month of um, June, that was quite hot. I did use up to 60,000, but the 20,000 is just what I use inside regularly. Are, are, these, I, monthly, I'd like to also, are these monthly figures you're... Uh, Monthly, everything's monthly. Okay. So I've used, I've used twenty thousand month monthly consistently on inside, and then didn't really water much in May at all. In June, I did use quite a lot, and I, I'm, I'm trying not to, but I'm trying to find a solution. And, and until I can find a solution, I used sixty thousand in June for um, outside. In July, we probably used oh only half or two thirds of that. You know, whenever it rains once or twice a week, we don't do any watering at all. Um, which, which is, it's crazy that June was hotter than it's been in um, July, but that was been. If I could add one more thing too, I'd like to propose my thought on a price. As, if that's okay, as I searched around for pricing on the West Coast, the highest water rate I could find here on the West Coast was in San Diego, and their highest tier was $11.80 a gallon. So I propose that you know, maybe maybe we say it costs more to go up a mountain, though I think I, I heard to pump 100,000 gallons may only cost, sorry, to pump 300,000 gallons may only cost somewhere of $800 of electricity. Um, but again, the, the, the special search could probably get back to that if you, if you wanted that information on what it really costs. But um, if they're $11, $11 is the highest San Diego gets, the highest I could find on the West Coast, um, let's say we have more altitude. So I would propose that you go from five to 15 and graduate it in there um, respectively, according to what you have now. But I think 50 would act, if the law actually says you can't do this to be punitive, they can only be the cost of the system. Um, I feel like it would, it would actually be against that if you went higher than 15. So anyway, I propose five to 15 at the same, just spread it out on the same tiers you have now, but the highest rate go up to 15. And again, that would put us higher than anywhere in the West Coast. The comparisons that we did, Deneen, um, I think it, this would probably be a good time to review those. Kit, would you, would you be able to do that for us? Sure. So the major, um, let me, sorry. The most comparative, from what I understand, um, special service district, I'm just going to confirm with Brady, was it Timber Timberland? Timber Lakes. Timber Lakes, because there's, there's both. Okay, so it's Timber Lakes. So their rates are 0 to 2,000 gallons, and they have a lot of tiers. Um, so 0 to 2,000 gallons is a dollar per 1,000 gallons. 2,000 to 4,000 is $2 per 1,000 gallons. 
4,000 to 5,000 is $13. 5,000 to 6,000 is $16.50. 6,000 to 7,000 is $17. 7,000 to 8,000 is $17.50. 8,000 to 9,000 is $20.50. I mean, it, it keeps going from there. I mean, I don't know how much more you want me to go. Like I say, they have another two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tiers. It looks like they go up to $32. Yeah, so a their gallon. highest tier is 18, over 18,000 gallons is $32 per thousand gallon. Yeah. And Timberlake's has like 500 homes in it this would be a really good sample for us because they are not allowed to have any outside watering obviously some of them do but they're really trying to curb that because and another thing we need to be thinking about throughout this process is you know i heard somebody say a minute ago that these mountain communities only have 0.25 acre feet where a, nat a regular com uh, home would have 0.45 acre feet which is only 12 thousand just over twelve thousand gallons a month i mean that's realistically all the water right we have and we can't have i understand the tiered thing but we can't have the average home being used more than that to what we have water right for we just can't we're not that's one thing we don't have in common with like san diego that we have a finite amount of water that we're even allowed to pump out of that well and once all of these cabins get built we need to keep it that so. thanks so that, was that Spencer? Spencer, yeah. Yeah, sorry, that was Spencer Park, Wasatch County Council. Okay. Board member. Um, <clears throat> can someone that is here with a CC, that knows the CCR is more thoroughly, uh, can they address the outside watering aspect? I thought there were some limits on that. So my name is David Sudweeks. I'm just a concerned neighbor. I am not a member of the board, but I have been a member of the board and been involved in writing the current CCNRs. Um, in doing so, we reviewed the older CCNRs and the CCNRs prior to that. Um, about the time that I bought uh, the CCNRs, the uh, CCNRs that I were delivered by my title company stated that there was no outside watering. Um, the next set of CCNRs that were rewritten uh, did not mention anything about outside watering. However, when I bought, I was a little concerned about the water situation just because I'm buying a mountain lot and I want to make sure I have water. So during my due diligence, I asked my title company to find out about the water, the special service district, or however I'm going to get water. Because if I don't get a water right, I want to know how I'm going to receive water. Um, Personally, as a lot as someone, as someone that's going to purchase ground, that's probably something you need to do. Um, I was delivered a letter uh, that Brady's very familiar with, that states very clearly that there is no outside vegetation to be watered, and none of the culinary water should be used for irrigation. That is a county letter set up by this board in this situation to uh, curb and limit the fact that anybody needs to do that. Uh, as for a very short period of time that it wasn't in the CCNRs, I truly feel that that letter was out there for any purchasers to read and discover if they would have done their due diligence. So uh, as the current CCNRs were rewritten this last year, we reintroduced the no outside watering and, and no uh, other vegetation. So that's kind of the rundown on it there was a very short period of time that it was not about two and a half years that it was not in in the ccnrs however that same period of time still had it in the county mandate for uh, recreational use as a quarter acre of water if i want to use that cabin or that that property for full-time use i have to get another quarter acre of water it can't be my primary residence unless I have another quarter acre of water to use. And it's very clear in that, that it states that as well. Um, on another note, uh, a family with 12 kids, I understand that, but I live very close to Bear. Uh, his guests have to come back by, by my house. Uh, we've had a wedding. We've had four or five very large get togethers, rumors of uh, 
family reunions. Maybe they're just friends. Maybe it's family. I don't know. Um, but whoever it is, uh, there's a lot more cars headed to Mr. Baird's property than immediate family using water inside. So I would imagine if, uh, if I have 14 friends at my 9,000 foot cabin that has plenty of bathrooms and they all take a few showers, my interior water usage probably would be 20,000 gallons. On the other hand, it's a single family dwelling home and I think it should be billed such as that. So that's kind of a special circumstance that I personally feel should just kind of be excluded from that. If someone wants to be that over usage, they're gonna have to pay the price. And the current CCRs were signed and published when? Yes. When? Uh, June, 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 June of 19? Yeah. June of 2020? Yeah, June of 2020. So I believe from 2017? I think it was a four-year period. Four-year period? 2016. Okay. Because we bought in 2016. Six, six right. Yeah. And it had to be right then because we were delivered the older CCNRs that showed it. And then that's how it goes. So, so that's, that's my take on it. Um, you know, I did my due diligence and I, sh I personally think that the mountain needs to be protected. I get that San Diego can take all the junk water that we didn't use out of the Colorado or wherever and charge what they need or Las Vegas can do that. We're on the very top of a mountain. Our water resources are the last couple of years in the springs underneath our mountain. Uh, just in the five years that I've been up there, we're pumping that water out of that mountain and into the tanks. There are springs that have dried up. There are springs that no longer run. There are uh, water detention ponds that are completely empty all the time that used to be full all the time. And this is a result of us using the water. We have 150 lots up there and for someone to say, well, you know, we're not using it right now, so I should be able to use it, is very irresponsible with our natural resources. And it's very ignorant to our neighbors that uh, own more of the, the well than we do to try and use their water before they have an opportunity to do whatever they want to do with their land. They, they still own that water and they still have the right to use it. That doesn't mean I build first, I get the water, you don't get to use it. So I don't want to see us put ourselves in a position where that would happen. And I feel that the attitude of, oh, well, it costs less to produce the water and it's just water and anybody can have it is the wrong attitude in a planet that is really leaning towards global warming and climate change or whatever other issues that we have out there. I think we have to be responsible with the mountain. And I think the tiered system is great in the spirit of compromise. Uh, I, Spencer from Wasatch County said very Plainly, it's 12,000 gallons for a regular home. They have twice the water we do. That's 6,666 gallons. Um, maybe our tier is a teeny bit off. Maybe 8,000 is a great compromise for all the owners up there. Maybe Brooke D'Souza would appreciate that, feeling like she would never get dinged with this instead of, you know, it's a scary thing. But uh, I don't know that we need to go above 8,000 for the first tier. I think that's a really good number. And I Honestly, as much as you want to charge after that, I do believe it should be punitive. And I do wonder with the comments that Mr. Baird made about, oh, well, you know, if you charge over 50, that's against the law or this or that. That's like water gouging or something. And uh, so maybe it's a fine. Maybe it needs to be written as a fine. Maybe your water is all five, five dollars a thousand. But after you use this much, you're fined X amount per thousand gallons to make up for the difference because it, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about fining for over usage. Thank you. Thanks, David. Well, my thought is the 8,000 gallon is uh, something I would certainly consider in the first tier. And from there, I think it, it becomes up to us as a board to decide how these other tiers work and how they fit. And uh, you know, I want I want to work in the spirit of fairness for everyone and make sure that that's what we're doing. But conservation, I agree, 
with what David has said, conservation is paramount on that mountain. Anyone that knows anything about water, it's really important. Been a lot of wars fought over water, and we don't want any of those. We just we want to establish something that is fair and equitable for everyone on that mountain. And we don't want any individual to distract from that or take away from that. Let's just make it as fair as we can for everyone. And uh, I would I would propose, and, and Spencer, how, how would you feel if we make this first tier from zero to 8,000 gallons, make the next tier 8,000 to 16,000, the next tier 16,000 to 32,000, and then the fourth tier 32 to 100,000. And then the final well, is, tier is 100,000 100, too much. You what? It would 100,000 be too much? Well, maybe maybe that is a consider maybe it is too much. It's too high, Mike. Who anyone here that actually lives there all the time? Could you speak to that? You raised your hand a couple times, so I thought we should ask you. <laughs> and as she comes up, if I could just make some suggestions from the legal side, it might help the meeting run smoothly if you have this period of public comment and, and let all the public that wants to comment now comment and then close public comment and then go into discussion after you've heard all that Good point. would be my advice. Good point. Thank you. My name's Robin Kara. Uh, my husband, Al Kara, and I live full-time at Soldier Summit. I, th I believe we're the only full-time residents. Uh, you did look up our usage. Um, I would just comment that it was something like 2,500 gallons a month or 3,000 gallons, whatever it would be. Um, we have three kids, they come up and visit us. We have grandchildren that come up and visit us. We have guests up quite often. Um, I, th I think that um, it's quite manageable to live within the proposed amounts. I mean, I'm, I'm, I again, I would echo that I'm uh, a proponent of what's been proposed here today, but I also would accept or think it's reasonable to adjust that to the zero to 8,000 uh, gallon limit also. But I, I do comment that uh, the numbers I've heard from other people on the mountain are excessive. And I don't believe that we need to make special accommodations for those excessive uses. And uh, up, even up to 100,000 gallons to me seems really excessive if we're really trying to promote conservation and good use of the water on the mountain. I think it's very doable. It's, it obviously is very, uh, a very livable condition. Uh, we've demonstrated that. And uh, you know we, we don't do outside watering. We certainly try to conserve. Um, you know, we I, I take a, a tub of water if I need hot water. You know, that's something my husband uh, should have put a hot water. What are those automatic yeah, things? But, you know, I catch the water before it gets hot so then I can save it if I want to water my house plants or just things like that. I mean, very simple conservation things can be accomplished uh, very easily for all. Thank you. Robin, can I ask you a question? Yes. Uh, what about the uh, amounts in the tier rates that we're charging there that we're, we're proposing? Do you, are you are saying that they're excessive? Is that, did I hear I do that not correct? believe they're excessive and I'm probably going to be impacted more than anybody uh, being a full-time resident. Um, I think that uh, the people that use the water should pay for it. I, I really strongly believe that, and I think the more aggressive the schedule, the better. Okay. Thank you. So Thank is 3,000 a right way to go, or 8,000, or somewhere in between? Um, I, I mean, I'm not opposed to the 8,000, but, but again, um, I think we live very comfortably under 3,000 gallons a month. As full-time residents. As full-time residents with plenty of visitors. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
Any other public comment? Can I say something? Commissioner? As we've been talking, we've been comparing um, to Las Vegas, San Diego, or whatever, but I can say we're one pump burnout away up there and we don't have any water. If the well fails and our tanks are empty because we can't keep them up because of excessive use, puts all these people in jeopardy with their cabins, with whatever. So we need to take that into consideration. We, we don't have a loop system like we have in the city where if a, a line fails, they can bring the water from another direction. If we lose a, a well pump, we don't have any water. So I was asking a question then. Any other public comments? So um, my name is Sean Tedrow. Um, my wife and I own a cabin up at Soldier Summit. And uh, obviously we're not up there as often as Al, but um, I, we're, we're pretty heavy users. You know, I, I, I work from there a lot, um, especially during COVID. Um, my family's up there all the time, extended family, you know, we, we host gatherings, not substantial gatherings, but, um, you know, we, we use our cabin. Um, I'd like to think that we pride ourselves on good personal hygiene. Um, I just looked through my last two invoices and one of them was from, uh, for six months, I think you said Blake and we used 7,000 gallons A and month? then, you no, know, from the whole six months, from December through June, I think it was. Um, and then for July, we used a thousand gallons. So, um, you know, we we're doing dishes, we're taking showers every day. Um, I just find it really disappointing, um, that we have members of the community that think that it's okay to consistently use, you know, excessive amounts of water. So I'm a proponent of the tiers. Um, in terms of the first tier, I think it gives people a little bit of a buffer, maybe gives people, uh, you know, like Ms. D'Souza, peace of mind, um, you know, to make sure that they're, they're not going to be impacted negatively by this financially. But I think 100,000 is way too high on the top end. I think that should, that should be compressed down 50 at the most. And there's no reason on a mountain in a desert in a drought that we should be that irresponsible with our usage, in my, in my opinion. So... Thank you, Sean. Uh, 50,000 a month is, like I mentioned before, almost 1,700 gallons a day for a 30-day month. I'm sorry, I should have asked one more time. Are there any other public comments? I have one more. Have one more? Okay. Uh, we have Scott Proctor on Zoom, if you want to go ahead and unmute and proceed. Scott Proctor. Yes, we're in New Harris, okay. Um, we, we own lot D71, we've had it for four years. And uh, first of all, I think that we're all a lot of very intelligent people. It's a self-selecting group that comes to this mountain. Uh, we're intelligent enough that we don't have to take a punitive approach to uh, tell everyone and slap their hands that you can't use this. We can talk about it as fellow neighbors and say, we have an issue here and we need to, um, we need to be wise in the use of our water, especially during drought time. We do this right where we live in Alpine. And so we change our water usage. And I think we can do the same thing there. I think the tier uh, method is commonly used, but I think the proposed tiers that you're talking about, the cost of them is is extremely punitive. And I think there are many of us who have large families. One of the gentlemen said, you know, there's people up there with large families having receptions and whatever. Well, we have a very large family, and I don't want to be uh, punished for having a large family and this being our dream getaway for our family. And so I think that I, I, I would propose that we do much more uh, conservative change if there's any change at all in the in the expenses that you're proposing uh, and I think we can all be smart wise good conservative neighbors especially in times of of, uh, of drought and maybe my wife has something to say too this is Maureen yes and what I was going to say is um, we do have different needs because of the sizes of our family and um, we, we have 11 children, and we have 24 grandchildren, and they will certainly come up during the summer. And that means automatically 
we're going to be punished for that, for the size of our family. I understand that everyone doesn't have that size, but what you're saying is there will be no no opportunity for us on that map because the cost of that water will become so punitive. Thank you. Thank you, Scott and Maureen. Uh, Alcara, Utah County. If I drive to Las Vegas uh, every day, I'm using more gas than if you drive once a month. It's a user fee. Um, I think that um, Brady could probably attest to this, but if somebody's causing us to pump more water and we go through pumps and we go through electricity and um, the system needs to be rebuilt, we have to spend more money on it. Um, that's going to affect all of us. And um, I know I would much rather pay a higher tier than pay a $6,000 special assessment because we need to rebuild the water system. And Timber Lakes had to do that. So th those are my only comments. I'm all for the tier rate. Thanks, so. Al. Any other comments about the existing tier um, and the proposed tier? Uh, it's Galen Stewart again. I just wanted to go through the calculations, and I don't know if anybody else has done this, just so you understand the, uh, the dollars with the amount of gallons. So if everybody's listening, listening, I, I did a tier from zero to 6,000 gallons, and that, that zero to 6,000 is gonna cost us 30 bucks. If you use 10,000 gallons, you're gonna, that's gonna a total bill of $100. If you use into tier three, 20,000 gallons, that would be a monthly billing of $370. The tier four, if you use 35,000 gallons, it would be $1,100, $1,165. And if you use 50,000 gallons, that's $1,500. So the, the, the 6,000 to 10,000 gallons, if you use 10,000 gallons, that's, that's $100 a month. That doesn't seem like a lot to, to me, but maybe it is to a lot of other people. And you get into 20,000 gallons, yeah, then you're close to $400 a month. But I don't know if everybody realizes that it, it's, not, it's not that much, but it may be a deterrent to, to help aid the, cons the conservatory of our water. So anyway, I just did that, this quick thing here on 6,000 gallons, and we can decide if it goes to 8,000 or whatever it is on that first tier. But that's how I did this was 6, 10, 20, 35, and 50, and then I didn't do anything after 50. Okay, um, the question on this notice was that uh, why is the board proposing a fee increase? And in it, it says the le Utah legislature passed a law that requires retail water suppliers such as Soldier Summit Special Service District to create pricing that promotes water conservation. And, and that's the intent of all of this, is not to be punitive, but just to conserve water. I missed someone coming up. Yeah, that's all right. For no, public comment. But the point second. here so, is that we're, it's not supposed to be punitive, but it's just to conserve the little bit of water that we have up there. So this is David Sudwicks again, and, and one simple point. So my brother has a cabin. I, I'm a family of adult, six kids, um, uh, and every one of us have a bunch of kids. And my parents and my brother and, and I and, and, and everybody comes from out of town every Thanksgiving to Pine Hollow, which is in uh, Wasatch County. It's a private water district there that runs their water. They shut the water off before Thanksgiving because they only have three foot in the ground water lines. Um, he has uh, two 1,800-gallon tanks, and we all have a great time on Thanksgiving. And then we go back up for Christmas, 
and have a great time on Thanksgiving and everybody shower on Christmas and everybody showers and everybody's cleanly and everything goes on. And then he continues to use that water um, usually till May 1st, uh, usually till Mother's Day. So uh, I think that there's a little misconception, especially when you're thinking, ooh, we're going to have a family get together and we've got a bunch of showers and a bunch mm -hmm. of dishes and a bunch of people. Uh, we, this tier system, especially if you were to move it to 8,000, will not affect those type of people. It just won't. Um, it's going to affect the people that obsessively use, period, end of story. And I understand that people say that they're using 20,000 a month inside, but I would just ask every person that's listening or here to go home and look at your water bill and your own city and realize that culinary water in most of these cities is different than irrigation. And so look at your culinary water bill and then really look back at this tier system and find out just how much you actually disagree or agree with it. Because I think most people will then probably really agree with this and realize what this is about. Thank you. Thank you. Any other online remote comments? So perhaps we can close public comment now. Mike, a lot to think about. This isn't easy. And if we propose a, a zero to 6,000, that would be doubling the gallons. Go to 6,000 to 20,000. Uh, maybe reduce the rate to like $8 per gallon per thousand gallons. Uh, do a tier from 20 to 35,000, reduce the rate to $15. Uh, then go from 35 to 50,000. Uh, go to $30 on that one. And then anything over 50,000, $40. I haven't put those numbers together to see what it would do, but that. Well, we're supposed to also encourage conservation. So if if someone wanted to use 200,000 gallons of water, is there a way that we, how do we cap this, cap this uh, tier system? Well. Other than going out and shutting it off. Well, and there's primarily two ways. I mean, the tiers can get very high. And, and to clarify something that some of the comments made here today spoke to, uh, the law doesn't prohibit punitive rates. But as you mentioned, Commissioner, these aren't intended to be punitive. They're just disincentives, right? It's, it's all semantics. But its, it's intent is to disincentivize excessive use. And, uh, and the law doesn't restrict your policy discretion. You can set it at various rates. What the law does require is that if the amounts generated far exceed the system costs over time, then we will need to revisit it and adjust them downwards overall. But you can have quite significant disparity between tiers. That's policy decision and in the discretion of this board. So you can set them at various numbers, various rates. You, your goal should be to make findings that this is in the best interest of the residents and Soldier Summit and it promotes conservation and to, to find that, to, to try to get close to what you think the system costs will look like so that we can fine tune from there. But it's not set in stone. You are allowed to have different amounts for different, uh, and, and in fact, by state law are expected to have different around, different amounts for different tiers and different rates. Um, but yeah, to, so to that point, you have broad discretion. Uh, to the other point, you, you do need to uh, think about ways to disincentivize, uh, but the high numbers at the higher end of the usage should be sufficient deterrent in our view. You should retain the right, and we do in our policies, to cut off people that do fail to pay their bills. We have the right to do that. Uh, we would recommend that it not be made you know, part of the policy that at this exact gallon usage, we're going to shut people off because there are transactional costs and other steps, procedural steps that have to happen before you cut someone off. But that's the other way to do it is by cutting them off, literally. Yeah, because so with that in mind, Brady, um, 
for public works perspective, what does it cost to operate the water up there? I don't have the actual figures. Deneen, you can probably, what we spend in electricity a month. And maintenance, I guess, which is pretty minor, I would imagine, if it's so most, For the most part, yes. 2020, the electricity was $12,472. And the collections from just the metered portion was, um, sorry, I have that number down, $6,500-ish. So, so is that per month or per year? Per year. Per year. So $12,000 for electricity, $500 for collection. Per year? $12,000? $12,000. Electricity, not water. Electricity. In to, a year. To run the pumps? So 1000 Um, no, these would be the 2020 rates, but when we compare the 2021 rates, they're coming in just a little bit lower than what we paid in 2020. So that's pretty cheap. Oh, so, I guess I would like to, to sorry, this is the Spencer part. I, I mean, I would think that maybe our bottom peer, tier should be zero to 7,000, because if we truly do have 0.2 acre feet per home, Sixty-nine hundred, roughly, um, That's true. gallons a year. So I, I would actually propose that we keep the rates as what we proposed, but drop the bottom tier to zero to seven thousand. I don't, I don't know what your guys' thoughts are on that. And then the seven to what range? Is keep everything else the same and and try it and see it and see how we go. I don't, I don't think it's punitive, but I think you do need to start charging more when people are using more than the water right that we have. Yeah, um, but you're saying Spencer that would be over the seven thousand. That'd be about six thousand sixty five hundred, wouldn't it? Yeah, I, I just did the math a second ago, and I think Brady said that was we had point two a five acre feet per uh, for uh, inside watering use, which I think is the state standard, um, which is sixty seven or six about sixty eight hundred gallons a month. That's that's how my don't. figures, and again, I'm not a, a an attorney with water rights, but that's what I found on the Utah Water Rights website. When Br when Br yeah, so what I did was just figured out how many gallons were in 0.25 acre feet, and then divided it by 12, and came up with the 6,800. So I did the same. Seven thousand seems to make sense. So zero to seven, and then seven to ten is what you're proposing for tier two. Yeah, I would I would keep it the same. Especially if those if those tiers kind of roughly follow Timber Lakes, I mean, there's a lot of study been into that, and there's a lot of cabins to compare there. You know, that's a big sample area. So I'm, how about I'm tier happy four? with that one. How about tier four? That's a huge jump. Uh, is that a reasonable range, or should that be constrained, twenty five, say, to fifty thousand or something like that? I'm open on that one. I. If you're using more than twenty thousand gallons, it's you're costing a lot of a lot of pump and electricity. Well, again, the whole point of this was is water conservation, as we've been directed by the state. No, yep. Mike. Yeah, I'm. <clears throat> I think raise it's it's like Denise said that seventy seven percent of our owners up there are using one to three thousand gallons a month. Yeah. So, so I, even raising it, it's not gonna it's not gonna bring us a whole bunch more revenue. No, it's just a matter of conservation. And if yeah. it does a price, is thirty five dollars sufficient? If it's um, should that be higher? Well, I I just have questioned a little bit on the proposed rates. They are high compared comparatively, um, where we might consider adjusting those a little bit down. Uh, in fairness, and I'm well. Then back to the volume is is a, is twenty five thousand one gallon to a hundred thousand. Is that? I'm good with the reasonable? volumes except for the the fourth tier, and I I I think I'm at the fifty thousand mark on that. So you're thinking twenty five thousand one gallon to fifty thousand? Yes. Spencer, what do you think? 
I would be fine with that. And then the fifth tier would be fifty thousand one gallon plus. Yes. And what are you thinking of in the way of um, monthly proposed rates? Spencer, do you have any thoughts? Um, I think we could keep them the same as what's proposed. So keep what's there. Mike is thinking that may be a little bit too high for the higher range. Maybe we could be thinking, Spencer, at on that second tier of going to eight dollars, third tier going to fifteen dollars, fourth tier to thirty dollars, and the fifth tier to forty dollars. If you wanted to make that a motion, I would second it. And I just in the thinks that let's keep an eye on it for a year or two and make sure we're covering our costs. And this proposal is doing what we want it to. Because again, we're, we're the focus of this consideration is water conservation, not necessarily whether it's going to be the cost to maintain it. So I'll yeah, but I mean, we got to. We're trying to get the uh, everybody to conserve water, but we also do have to show that we're we need this money for costs. So that's kind of why I'd say we maybe we reevaluate it in the year, and make sure we're covering our costs. So I'll uh, put that into a motion. Tom, are you okay with that? If I sure, go ahead and so go tier one and just read us through. So we'll get... the... Yeah, let me make a few recommendations on this on the motion and, okay. and the language that we would like to hear. I mean, what what we want is clear numbers on the proposed rates, a finding that this is justified based on the public comment that was taken today and the comparatives that have been reviewed and the discussion that's occurred today, and that it's in the best interest of the residents in Soldier Summit and to promote conservation. We're implementing the following rates. We move to implement the following rates. Then you go through each number tier and how much you want it to be, and then also include the date that you want it to be effective. Uh, what what would be helpful for us is to say it'll go out on the very next bill, which will be whenever the next bill. We'll read the meters probably next week, so it would go out. So, yeah, so, the, so you expect me to be an attorney? <laughs> <laughs> just asking you to kind of think all through all those things. And I can I can walk you through it again, but yeah. but just I'd start by saying you know make the motion that based upon the uh, or you can just say. I move what, what Ben just said. That's fine, too. <laughs> but, the, but the motion should be that it's in the best interest of the public based upon the, the comments and the comparables, the public comment here in the meeting today, to uh, move forward with the following tiered rates to be implemented on the very next utility bill to be sent out. And I, then go through your rates. I think as a board, we've listened to all the public comment uh, carefully and assess that and listening to that and in uh, a spirit of conservation, uh, I would like to make a motion that we set the tier one rate zero to 7,000 at $5 per thousand. Uh, the next rate from 7,000 and one gallons to 10,000 gallons to $8 per thousand. The next, uh, Tier three, from 10,001 gallons to 25,000 gallons to $15 per thousand. From 25,001 gallons to 50,000 gallons to $30 per gallon and 50,001 gallons plus to $40 per thousand gallons. And perhaps we will include, as was suggested, we re-examine re uh, those rates at the end of this calendar year, Spencer, or next year? I'd say probably next year. Let's get a whole full year in, in data before we do it. So August, a uh, date to be decided, but August of 2022. So in addition to that motion to add that we um, look at uh, these rates in one year from now? and, uh, and this, ass assess where we're at financially. And this, you also need to add to the motion that this will include, uh, will begin on the, the next bill with the full, full, include, let's see, 
it should be included in the next full billing cycle. So I'll add to that That's motion we'll start. that this will take effect beginning in the next billing cycle, um, which would be effective when, Deneen? Well, I know that there's a reading coming soon, but I feel like that would be for July usage. So I think it would be right to do it for August usage that will be billed in September. Okay. Then for with what Deneen said, we'll, we'll start this beginning August 1st of this year, 2021. Well, we don't want to begin August 1st because that was a couple days ago. We want to make sure none of this is retroactive, mm -hmm. that everybody had fair notice of what was the new rate. September 1. Well, September 1st. That's not too soon then. So September make, make okay. this active September 1st, 2021. We're actually reading to the middle of the month to the middle of the month. So to make it easier for accounting reasons, we would, do we want to set it for the... So do the middle of August. The, the, the reading, August. yeah. The, so covered and everybody's clear. We'll read next week and then okay. we'll kick it in the 15th of August. Mm -hmm. So you're good with that? Yeah, Please. and from the legal side, we're comfortable with so that. So add it to uh, revise that motion to August 15th, 2021. When is August? I will second that. <laughs> okay. That's, well, that a, long... that's a Sunday, by the way. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and again, from our perspective, what's important is the to know the bill that will be reflecting in the residence mailboxes what bill will reflect these new tiers and that should be the bill that they receive in september if i understand how it's billed mm -hmm. so we have a motion and a second all in favor say aye 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 that passes three zero then then uh any other business that we should bring up I don't think so. It's not on the official agenda, but I thought yeah, that would ask anyway. If you wanted to have further conversation, just sort of discussion, you can't take action on further things, but if you wanted to discuss what you wanted to do for commercial users in the future or start thinking about that, you can have those conversations now, or you could save that to the next regularly scheduled meeting, whatever makes the most sense for you. I will say that for the next scheduled. I, I would say save it and because we're not close to metering that yet. So. Yeah. And uh, when is the next meeting? Maybe. 17th, so two weeks from today. And um, hopefully we can talk about a second well, too. Yeah, the agenda on that meeting, just for the public's benefit, there's going to be discussions about ARPA funding possibilities. There's going to be discussions about wells and all red water and a, and a few other items. So that will be published in due course. That, what time is that meeting, Alice? Do you know? 10 a.m. So. Yeah, keep an eye out on that if you're interested in any of those issues, but there will be important discussions to be had about commercial water use and about uh, where we're going to put a second well and how we're going to get the money for a second well. And, Brady, I guess you'll bring a map or illustration where that well would be? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, then we have a motion to adjourn. I will make a motion that we adjourn. Second. All right, then we were... <laughs> that passes 3-0. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your comments.